Hello everyone and welcome back to video number four for the how to make a Minecraft mod pack. So let's jump straight in because this might be a short video in comparison to the last ones that we've been doing. Um, so straight away I've already prepared. I have, uh, let me just minimize this rubbish and I apologize for the mess down here. I had an, uh, an interview last week and uh, <laughs> as you can see I went through quite a lot of preparation. Um, I should get rid of all that to be honest but it's useful stuff. Anyway how to make a mod pack. I've already prepared what we're going to be doing and we're going to be looking at the spawn, uh, just another spawner mod. And what it does is it allows you to basically tweak uh, mob spawn rates and also change what can spawn. I mean if you really wanted to you could have the ender dragon or wither bosses spawning naturally. Not that you really want to but if you really wanted to mess around with that then you could. So it's kind of cool but basically what we're going to do is we're going to use it to take mobs from uh, Twilight Forest and Ancient Warfare and make them spawn wherever we want. So for instance for Twilight Forest we're going to take um, the you know things like the deer, the squirrel, the ravens, the birds, all that natural ambient creature stuff from Twilight Forest and allow them to spawn naturally in the overworld. And this can be really cool because, uh, you know, why not have deer and squirrels running around the birch forests in the overworld? Makes sense. It adds new mobs to the overworld rather than just limit it, limiting it to Twilight Forest. And then what we're going to do with Agent Warfare is we're going to take the bandits, which do not spawn naturally at all. They just do not spawn. They only spawn in with their structure gen. But what we're going to do is we're going to take them, add them to the spawn list, and then have them uh, spawn in small uh, small bands, small groups. So you will actually have naturally spawning bandits running around your world. And that's basically what we, we can do with just another spawner. So it might turn out to be quite a short video, as I'm just going to go straight in and show you how to do what I've just listed. And that's going to be it. So you will need just another spawner and Agent Warfare Twilight Forest. And, well, I've got not enough items in there just so I can use the uh, quickly toggle through day and night. You're not actually going to need that. So let's go ahead and start this up because we're going to need to generate all the folders and such that we need. Shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Interlude music. And what just another spawner will just have done is generated a whole new folder with a lot of info. So let's go and do a new world because that's the old world that we were messing around with biomes on. Uh, we've got a creative, super flat, and turn structures off. Um, there might still be structures available though because of ancient warfare. It still generates like these bandit camps. So we'll have to try and move away from those. And give it a moment. And the good thing about this mod is that we can reload it. Yeah, here we go. A lot massive towns, and it's going to lag for a minute while this spawns in. Um, there's also some more stuff down there that I can't quite see. Yeah, and another castle, but these massive towns are spawned in by ancient warfare. So let's go ahead and try and move away to a clearer spot. It's a shame that they're not affected by the uh, generate structures thing. Right, let me just move a bit further away. There we go. I, just, I don't want to see anything around us for, for good spawning and also less lag. That'll do. Okay, so let's park our asses here. Right. Okay, if you may have noticed, uh, the Just Another Spawner mod will absolutely spam the hell out of this window with all of this stuff. It will spawn this bat, and that is an ambient creature. We've spawned it at these coordinates in the plains biome, and as you're moving around and you're in a proper world, you're going to get absolutely spammed with this. Um, what I will show you though, real quick, is I forgot to show you in the other videos actually. You may notice that when you've got the game open, all that's available is this window and you've no longer got that little box where you can click open instance and you have to go to your files and go all the way there. Well, there, there is a shortcut, I just go to resources, view to folder and then drop that one and here we are. Just I, I kind of forgot to mention that earlier. But anyway, back to that config, it will have generated a just another spawner folder which is what we want and it's generated a lot of stuff, a lot of it you don't even need to worry about. I will however start with the login properties and it is this stuff. All of this stuff here, um, except for that, that is that will spam the hell out of this. So when you're ready to release or you need to see other stuff that's going on here, you might want to tone it down, otherwise this is going to go absolutely mental. Oops. So that's where you can change that. Anyway, let's move on to the actual spawning stuff. You want to go into, start from the beginning here, just another spawner. 
world settings, basic, default. And then what we want is the spawn list entries here. And then eventually we're also gonna want this stuff in the entity handlers. So let's start out with the easy stuff. We'll go in here. If you open up vanilla, this will show you all of the vanilla mobs. And what this does is it generates a list of all the mobs from a certain mod. So you'll see that it has actually neatly cleaned everything up into one list. You may also notice that Ancient Warfare hasn't got a file and that's because it doesn't actually have anything that naturally spawns. We're gonna fix that later. But for now, Twilight Forest does spawn stuff. So that's why it's generated a folder. So it will clean things up. If the mod author hasn't put a proper namespace in, which you don't really need to worry about what that is, but basically if it hasn't generated a folder, it will generate a little com file, which is like a default namespace and anything that isn't put into its own namespace will go in there. You might not understand what that means. If you're a modder, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, if you can't find a folder with a mod name that's on it and you know it spawns mobs and there's a com folder, look in the com folder. Com being C-O-M as in dot com. Okay, so we can see straight away um, that in a flat world, we are of course in a planes biome. And it says there, planes biome. So we're gonna mess around with just the planes biome. Because what this does is it'll take every single mob that this mod would add, or in this case, vanilla. So we've got ambient creatures, which is a bat. We've got normal creatures, which is all the passive stuff. And then you've got a monster, which is the naturally nasty stuff. And as you can see, yes, with a boss and even the ender dragon is here. And you can change it to spawn naturally if you really wanted to. And what it does is it spawns this list over and over again for each biome. So you can see here we've got the beach, uh, here we've got birch forest. So what that does mean is if you're using biomes aplenty and any other mod that adds lots of biomes, this list will get huge. I did this for Lordcraft. I had biomes aplenty. I had realistic world gen. I had twilight forest and there were so many biomes. It took me weeks to go through and do all this stuff. So do it bit by bit, release it in updates if you have to, because it will drive you mental. Anyway, skipping forward, we want to be messing with just the planes because we're in a flatland and that's going to save us a lot of time. So. Uh, next, there we go. Here's the planes biomes, and we can clearly see the spawn rates for vanilla stuff. So bats have a weight of 10. They will spawn in maximum uh, passive packs uh, four, which is basically like a group size. You may notice that a lot of the time, uh, certain creatures spawn in like groups of four. You might have seen cows. And then you've got eight and eight. Basically, the minimum amount that will spawn and the maximum amount that will spawn per chunk is eight. So there is a lot of bats available and you can tone that down. And it says it for everything else as well. You know, you've got all the monsters, you've got the creatures, and as we can see, the Ender Dragon does not spawn because it has zero weight. Um, whereas skeletons, slimes, and spiders in this biome spawn loads, which is why when you're on a flat, flat world, when you're not in peaceful, slimes go mental because they have a weight of 100, which basically guarantees they're gonna spawn. So that's kind of what that means. And we're gonna play with this except we're not going to use vanilla we want to go ahead and spawn twilight forest stuff so let's go ahead and go back to planes here so let's say we want just the normal creature stuff not the monsters just the creatures so let's say the big sheep um a good weight is usually 10 to 15 if you want to allow other stuff because it, just think if you put a weight of 100 they're gonna have a higher priority than other stuff including the vanilla stuff so you could if you go crazy with this and put it like a weight of 100, these bighorn sheep will probably have a higher chance of spawning than chickens, sheep, pigs, and that could of course be a problem. So good numbers, usually 10. If you really want them to spawn, I usually go for 15, never any higher than 20, in my opinion. It's up to you to play with that. And I'm gonna say one, between one and four per chunk, and I'm gonna leave them as groups of four. Um, this number seems to take more of effect with the hostile mobs when I use the ancient warfare guys. I set it to two when they spawned in groups of two, but we'll play with that in a bit. So it seems to be a bit fiddly, but I'm just going to go through and say the bunnies can spawn. Yep, yep, the squirrels can spawn. I don't care about glacier penguins or loyal zombies or the question room. Um, see, birds, I've got lots of them because they're kind of ambient creatures. So I'm going to say four to eight, spawning groups of eight, wild boar, monkey, 10, 
and one to four max, and then the uh, one to four max as well. Now the good thing about this mod is we don't need to reload the game. There are commands. Unfortunately, they seem to be broke. I mean, if I type this in, it says unknown. Um, so I do have the wiki available and ready. So I remember to put the, the uh, I will link to this because it's got all the commands. Um, there are a couple that you really only need to rely on, however, and that is, first of all, uh, if I can remember, we want to jazz. I can't remember if it was config load or load config. I think it was load config. And yes, that's right. Because if I now type in jazz and spawn list, or is it list spawns? It might have been list spawns. There we go. This is everything that can now spawn in this biome. So as you can see, it starts off by saying biome planes and it contains. So if we look at creatures, yeah, it says Twilight Forest Squirrel, Twilight Forest Raven with a weight of 10. The red number is the weight. So we now know that the plains biome is going to spawn these things naturally. So that's with spawn list spawns. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in jazz and kill all, and it's gonna kill all the mobs. So it's just killed 369 different creatures, apparently. I don't know what the nun bit is about, but eh, whatever. And that's going to allow new stuff to spawn in. As we can see already, we have success. The deer have naturally spawned in, in a group of four. Um, they're cows, we don't care about cows. And that's awesome. So if we go ahead, we can get the sword out. You know, they're completely normal mobs. We can kill them, they drop stuff. And that's, there we go. And, okay, let's go ahead and see if we can find anything else. To make this quicker though, there are things we can do. We're going to type in jazz locate and this is a list of everything that is spawned in around us at the minute so we have a bunny okay let's teleport to him uh, oops and you are at minus one rip my mouse three four four minus eight five one and a boop and you there we are bunnies yay Dead bunnies, no. Okay, so the bunnies are spawning. Let's try that again. Locate. What else do we have? We also have a raven. So let's teleport to the raven, make sure he's there. Uh, what's this? Minus 30, four, minus 792. And there they are. There's the ravens. So as you can see guys, we have taken mobs from a completely different mod and a completely different dimension and allowed them to spawn in the overworld. And you can do this with any overworld, you can sp to spawn anything you want, you can tweak the values. If you're wanting to make like a hardcore mod pack and you don't want sheep to spawn in groups of four, you could make them spawn in groups of one so they become extremely rare. Uh, yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So the next thing we're gonna do then is go ahead and take the Ancient Warfare bandits and um, this will constantly say it's being reloaded because it's been in use of course so just click yes um, let's get rid of the twilight forest stuff now and what we want to do now is go into entity handlers and then ancient warfare and what you'll see is it says none that basically means nothing it doesn't have a type it's not ambient it's not a creature it's not a water creature it's not a monster so they're not going to spawn at all so i'm going to take the native soldier just because it's at the top and it's the easiest. Native soldier in ancient warfare is, I believe, the jungle soldier. And I'm going to change him to monster true. And that should allow him to spawn. So if I save, and then I'm going to reload config. So it's load config. Okay, there we go. Now that should have generated the new folder in here. There we go. Here we have it, and as you can see, the native soldier has now been added to the spawn list. So I'm just going to jump back to planes like before, and we're just going to do exactly what we did last time. I'm going to have a weight of, well I want these to spawn quite a lot, so let's say 25. I want them to spawn in small groups of two, and then let's say maybe, I don't think these bits affect it so much, but in this particular case when I was testing, this value here, the passive pack max, seems to be the, the groups that they spawn in. But the fantastic thing though about Ancient Warfare is that these their bandits actually have AI. And it, it's not so apparent on a flat world because it looks, looks like they're all running to one spot. But they do actually travel around the world and it was really awesome when I was watching it happen on my mod pack. So anyway, let's go ahead and um, load a config again. Yep. And then we will kill all just to clear out anything that's already spawned. Okay, and then we're just going to give it a moment 
and I'm of course going to need it on some kind of difficulty. Ah, there we go, straight in. And there we have it, we have bandits naturally spawning in our world. Because it's a flat world, they will spawn in massive packs, as you can clearly see. And they all seem to run towards a central point, <laughs> as you can clearly see. Um, it's not as bad when you're in a proper world, but yes, you will need to tweak and balance, but still, you can do some amazing stuff with this. And yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's incredible stuff. Anyway, this is a short video, guys, but this is just something I thought you'd really appreciate being able to put into your mod pack. So thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to watch the rest of the videos. Go watch the playlist if you haven't seen the rest, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.